Hi, I'm Evan and welcome to my fish room. Uh, today's video is going to be my review and my improvements on my uh, Inkbird C206T outlet thermostat. I'd also like to take a moment and thank all my new subscribers. Uh, my last fish room tour video uh, has done quite well for my channel, uh, breaking over a thousand views and uh, skyrocketing my subscription subscribers from uh, 18 to 79 just before I started shooting this video. That's absolutely incredible. I want to thank you all. Um, means a lot to me that you're subscribing and commenting and liking my videos. Um, it's nice to get feedback and uh, no, I'm not just shouting into the into the abyss. Um, thank you all so much. And if you're not a subscriber, uh, please hit that uh, subscribe button. Thank you. So I just want to say I did not receive anything for free other than the warranty return on these. Um, I don't think it was a failure um, that would happen under standard usage. Like most people use these for uh, like heat mats or whatever for reptiles. I was using this to control the dehumidifier that I use to heat my fish room. I guess I should quantify why I'm qualified to speak on the electronics and the amperages and voltages and whatnot I will be referring to. Uh, this may be a little bit technical for some people. Um, I'm actually a journeyman red seal electrician. I've uh, been in the trade for Oh, 20 years. Um, I've worked on industrial, commercial, and residential. I, I know my way around electricity. Um, and, and actually, if I, a lot of the things I use to control aren't the, uh, you know, cheap Chinese electronics. They're um, usually made in Canada, made in the U.S., uh, commercial grade stuff because I would rather spend a little bit more money and get that lifetime of use and reliability. Because I've seen, I've seen so many electronics fail catastrophically and anything, it's a pay once, cry once type thing. Uh, yeah, you can cheap out and get the dollar store timer. And if all you're ever running is a small, small load, like a, let's say a 60 watt or less load, you're probably going to be okay. But when you start trying to run, say, all your lights or um, big, powerful lighting, then you're going to run into issues. So this is the one in, new in the box. I haven't even opened it yet that they sent me for a warranty return. In the meantime, I had bought one on my own because Amazon was going to get it to me faster than Inkbird's warranty could. And seeing how it was the thing I used to control my, the heat of my, my fish room, I needed it a little quicker than uh, Inkbird's warranty could could get it to me. Because it took it took three days of emails back and forth. They tried to troubleshoot it. Um, but I I just said, yeah, no, that's not... I never you know told him my credentials or anything. I just said, yeah, no, that's, uh, that's not the issue. And eventually they're like, all right, we'll just send you a new one. So without further ado, let's uh, open this up. First thing that comes out is a uh, Inkbird warranty card. Uh, you got your little manual. And we got the, uh, the unit itself. temperature probe underneath. Um, this is a spare for me now. I'm just going to put it back together and put it back in the box. So here's the one that failed. Um, it's got the LCD display, the little wiring harness, plugs into the circuit board. It plug in right here. Uh, 
Um, this is a little transformer that will knock the uh, voltage from 120 down to uh, whatever voltage the controls are running at. Could be 12 volt or 6 volt or 3 volt. I don't know for sure. It doesn't say on it. Um, and this is the part that I'm going to call a little contactor or relay. It says it's rated on, on it. It says it's rated for 20 amps on 125 volts. Well, I misspoke in my first take. Um, I said it is uh, about 1300 watts. It's actually 960 watts, which puts it at 7.5 amps. So that's well below what the uh, Inkbird is rated for. And after three months, it failed. And <clears throat> there's a red light right here that lights up when it's when it's calling for for heat. So that would stay on. So this unit was constantly calling for heat, but it had no electricity flowing through it. So that tells me that the contactors, the contacts inside this sealed unit are what gave up. Well, because my dehumidifier is a motor load, when it starts up, it, it does, it draws more power than, uh, let's say like a resistance load, like say an aquarium heater or a reptile mat, where that's just a, just a heat load. But with the motor load, when motors start up, they draw up to two to three times their, their regular running amperage. And I'm thinking that inward rush of electricity is what caused these contacts to fry. But then, man, it even smells a little burnt too. Like electronics, when, you, when you've seen enough electronics fail, you know, you know what fried electronics smell like. <laughs> But their warranty was really good. Um, it was three emails and they sent, I just had to give them my Amazon purchase because I bought it on Amazon. I just had to give them my Amazon purchase number and they mailed one out to me. It took a little bit longer to get to me, but they replaced it. So I can't argue with that customer service. Um, I would definitely, well now I have one that I'm using and one that spare brand new in the box. Um, I would definitely recommend buying these. However, if you're gonna run a motor load off them, even if you're, uh, even if you're running like an electric, uh, even if you're running like an electric heater that has a little fan in it, I would still consider finding something with a little more uh, amperage capability. All right, um, let's take a quick look at how I have it set up now. It's plugged into the wall here and on the opposite side of the room. Right now the red light is illuminated on it because it's actually calling for for heat. But I turned the dehumidifier off from, from the dehumidifier. I just turned off the switch there. So it's plugged in there and then it's got a cord that runs underneath my big stand and then it runs into here. So <clears throat> this is also a contactor and you can see it's pulled in right here. That's the, that means it's calling for heat and sending power from these terminals to these terminals. This is all live right now, but like I said, I'm turning an electrician. I know what I'm doing. So this, this wire, these two wires here are coming from the ink bird. They are causing this electromagnetic coil inside this contactor to suck the contacts in and connect the terminals top to the bottom. And then and the wires going in the top and the bottom. One is one is power in and the other one is power out. Again, just on cords for now. One day 
everything's kind of sort of temporary. And it comes over here to my dehumidifier. Anyway, it's a Garrison 3-in-1 portable air conditioner, and it heats my entire room. Like, it keeps it not bad. I mean, it's plus, or sorry, it's uh, minus 30 out this last week. And that's all I have on my window for confidence or uh, condensation. There's actually more on the rest of the house. You go upstairs. But yeah, that's, I just got it draining into a bucket for now. Yeah, that's how I use that little ink bird to uh, control the heat of my fish room. I should also mention that the ink bird that failed, I had directly plugged into the, uh, into the outlet and then the dehumidifier directly plugged into it. Um, right now, I switched it so the ink bird's powering another contactor. So that coil on that contactor is maybe two three watts of power that it's uh that it's controlling now and so there's barely anything going through that ink bird now um so it should it should last a long time the contactor i got now is rated for 30 amps and i think like a five horsepower motor my dehumidifier is anywhere near that so and that's a commercial grade uh contactor uh, obviously I'll be putting the cover on now that I'm done shooting the video. I just wanted to you all to sh or I just wanted to show you all how how I'm using the inkberg now. Um, running that reduced load, I think everything should be fine. Uh, if it does fail in the future, I will obviously let you all know. Um, I do have the spare now, but uh, Unfortunately, it failed while I was out of town and um, lost a couple fish because of it, but what can you do, right? So thank you very much for watching. Uh, please like and subscribe. Leave a comment. If there's anything I wasn't clear about, uh, please leave a question. I'll uh, answer you in the comments. Um, thank you very much for watching and uh, I'll see you all in the next one.